Yeah. All right, so first of all, my name is Zach. I run Zeus Wolf, the music vlog based out of here in New York. Awesome. Happy, to, happy to have you guys today. You guys put on an awesome show. Thank we're here, you we're here with Jacoby. Thanks, all right, yeah. so from Melbourne, Australia, you're here in New York. You just finished an awesome show at Time Inc. at New York. How are you guys feeling? Man, good. Man. Man. Sleepy, yeah. really sleepy. Mm. So what's, what time is it back in Australia right now? It's 10 a.m. And um, yeah, to be just so tired. Yeah. It's we arrived here yesterday, so. Yeah. But you do it for the fans. You do it for the culture. Yeah, do yeah, it for the love. Yeah, it, was love. Pretty, it was it was beautiful playing out there. Oh, the view was incredible. The sundown. Mm. Oh, that, the red skies. That was crazy. Yeah. 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 It was a really special moment to be able to do that. I'm sure. So how is it? So you're from Australia. You're coming over here to New York. How does it feel, you know, seeing this crowd of people vibing with your music? That must just feel incredible. Yeah, I don't think we're, we're still not used to it. You know still I mean? getting used to it? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's Even still... It's happening more and more, but still, it kind of takes you by surprise every time, I think. I'm sure. Well, we, I interview a bunch of rappers. Everyone kind of says, like, the same thing. They kind of, like, black out a little bit when they perform. Mm -hmm. like, they just get so into it, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden, they're like, what the fuck just yeah, happened? It's yeah, like an yeah, out-of-body yeah. experience, kind of. You get in the zone, for sure. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. sure. And you guys were all definitely vibing, you know, jamming out. Yeah, um, when we yeah. first started, it was, like, we'd play four songs, and then we'd play them on repeat, and then that was, like... <laughs> That was, was like, that, that was, was yeah. We'd make it half an hour. And like, oh, we did half an hour. That's, we're so proud of that. Yeah. And now it's like, if we get told we have to play a half an hour set, it's like that's, that's it? gonna it's feel like two. Now, yeah, the, now time you're when gonna you're take you're songs it. out. Now, that's yeah. never happened. Well, that, that's a good thing though. Yeah, it's great. It's definitely better than the alternative. It's bad if like you know people like different songs. Mm. Different but way. people saying time flies when you're having fun. They're not just saying that. That's an actual that's a fact. Yeah, yeah. True. that's true. That's a fact. Believe that. Is this tour part of your tour with the Sufferers? Yes. yes. Okay, so can we get a little background on that tour? Um, so we haven't actually started it yet. Oh, so wow. so we, we flew in yesterday and we're just doing press, promo, this sort of stuff for a couple of days. And then we go to Atlanta and we start in Atlanta. I think it's not until the 22nd of this month. Yeah. You guys so, excited for it? Yeah. yeah. It's going to be fun to play with another band because like we supported Fishbone and we've done a few little like... Um, you know, one-off shows with supporting other people, but mm -hmm. we've never hit the road with another band. So I think we're just pumped to share the stage in that sort of way. Um, For sure. It's going to be cool. How'd you guys get connected with them? Greg Little. Greg oh, Little. yeah? There you go. Greg's the man. Atlanta. New uh, Frontier. Uh, New Frontier, yeah. Cool. Um, Makes so a good steak. He pretty much, <laughs> he pretty <laughs> much <laughs> he's the man that's got us over here. Um, we released four songs on SoundCloud. He heard a couple and he pretty much sent us an email saying, do you guys want to come to America? And we said, yeah. For sure. We, <laughs> so we broke That's... piggy banks and we went. And then mm. we played um, like pretty terrible shows, empty rooms. Yeah. <laughs> but like... then it got us here, I guess. Mm. And we slept and lived in a 36 foot bus. We bought this bus from this guy in, in LA. And it was destroyed windscreen but was it was so, but it was weird it was good when he sold it to yeah, us yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, slowly, fixed slowly. everything perfectly <laughs> as soon as we took off the generator broke so no lights at night no aircon no air air windscreen was smashed we broke the auto stairs as well it we was was yeah, I suppose yeah, I'll yeah, add to the yeah. story though it's like oh it was really shitty conditions now we're here you know doing our thing he sold it to us brand new 15 minutes later it was not half 15 minutes later it was yeah, but it was the best thing we ever did because it made us like if we could survive that trip mm, yeah. like man there were fruit flies in the place just going around like it was, it was he made think about this he made us bunk beds in the back so these bunk beds here they were like each bed was that thin to sleep on mm. And then they weren't stuck into the ground. So person that was driving oh, at so night, you'd wake up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'd sleep in the back of the bus, but then we'd wake, wake up, up in the front. Yeah, yeah. How the fuck did I get? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, I call it humble beginnings. Yeah, yeah. Humble yeah. beginnings. Very, very humble. 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 That still, I still reckon yeah. that's the best tour. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. But the excitement level was yeah. definitely yeah. up yeah. there. The well, real quick, how 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 many cities is this tour? This is four cities. Four, okay. four, four cities. cities. Oh, cities. Oh, oh, eight. 20, no idea. Eight or Dude, something like that. We got 28 shows. More. This tour? 30, no, man. This tour? No, no the, the tour you're on right now. Oh, oh, oh I know, no, yeah. I think close to 30, like just under 30, I think. Damn. Mm. So I feel like I hear us all the time, you know, going on tour, being on tour across the country, across many cities, has a lot of physical and like mental toll. Mm, yeah. You guys, I'm sure sleeping in bunk beds are far out of place. You must <laughs> yeah. feel that. You must get that toll, right? Mental but toll, I think... Um, I, it's maybe the guys with partners and really close relationships back home. I can imagine that mentally and emotionally would mm -hmm. be draining. Um, 
It is, yeah, it's draining, like, fam- like I'm really close with my family anyway, so when you don't see them for a while, you kind of miss that connection, but we're lucky enough to have a band that's based off family, so mm-hmm. that's my brother, these two are cousins, this is our best mate, seven years, do you know gotcha. what I mean? So we've been very lucky to keep it a family bond, so... Mm-hmm. And when you're in a family, because we're, we're brothers, we have to share beds... And you got to hear him snore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's magic. I was going to ask you about that, though. So you were playing with your family, working with them all the time. Like, I love my sister. She's a great girl. If I worked with her, I probably would want to, like, bite her head off. Is that yeah. annoying kind of working with family? Or you guys just too close for that? No. no I, think music, right. music, me, I think with music, it kind of... Um, I think music's a bit different than, like, kind of work work. Because mm-hmm. it's like you are both connecting on something to make it better or do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, like, well, something course, also it's bigger than yourselves. Exactly, yeah, so sure. it's kind for of sure. like it's kind of like our kid in a weird <laughs> fucked up way to say yeah. it. But it's like, <laughs> <I feel> like, <laughs> yeah. Each song to us is like a baby. Sure. Fuck, that's tripped out. Uh, but, I got you, it's all good. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like, so we, at the end of the day, it's not about what we want individually, it's what we want to make that baby have a great it's all life. for the baby. It's all yeah. for the baby. Yeah. Yeah. It's all for the baby. So snoring, yeah. feet smell, doesn't matter. Falling out of bunk beds, you put yeah, up with yeah, the, yeah. the greater good of the baby. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. It. I love it. Um, so I want to get into your background a little bit. You're from Melbourne, Australia. How did you guys all form? I know you guys are related and stuff, but when did you form the band and how did you guys like, kind of come together? Who wants to tell this story? I can if you want to. Do it. Go for it. Okay. Yeah. So pretty much from what I know. Um, <laughs> from what I know. So from what, <laughs> I, from what I remember forming the band. So these guys who are a little bit older than me and Jerome, just a little bit, they have been playing music for a long time. Okay. Together, separately, whatever, yeah? Um, so as they were doing that, me and my brother slowly got into music production. Um, we started producing together, whatever happened. Mm-hmm. I met Adzi through my ex-girlfriend, and I met Adzi, and I was like, hey man, music, music, Ableton. bang. Best mates, yeah? From there, I moved in with Jesse and Adzi and I introduced my brother to the boys, so we were all pretty much living together. I just used Starting, to come over steal all your food. Yeah, yeah pretty, pretty much playing with my dog, steal the food. That's we right. started kind of dabbling and having a play and then like, I think Jerome actually read a song called Love Me Like She Does and then we're like, wow, let's turn this into a song. Booked sessions, whatever, whatever. Kind of got good at it, then mm-hmm. we laid it down the track. Adzi was like, this is good, Robbie's gonna make it better, way better. Robbie, was, let me just cut. Robbie was the lead singer of a band that was doing pretty good. I was actually asking, were you guys in previous bands before this? <laughs> so you were in a band oh. before. Th- yeah. Robbie band was in this. every band. Bro. Robbie was <laughs> in every band. Every band in Australia you were a part of? I play in Australian bands. <laughs> yeah. Uh, bands. All of the bands? Plural, <laughs> yes. But the thing was, because these guys invited me to come and like check it out. And, and Adzi just sort of said, I remember the conversation. And he was like, yeah, just come like check it out, see what you think. It was so cash. Mm-hmm. So I went in there really like cash. And then they started playing. And I was like, I'd already, I was pretty much already dialing my other <laughs> band. <laughs> I was like, guys, sorry, this isn't working out. <laughs> I was just playing with this band. Yeah, it's not going to work out. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's not going to happen. It was pretty instant. Like I knew as soon as they, maybe like 30 seconds in, I, it was just special and... And I just wanted to be a part of it. I feel like you can't describe when you feel a connection that strong. I feel like it just feels natural, right? Yeah. Mm, yeah, it just, just like makes sense. Yeah. yeah. But not that's, entirely. That's why I wanted you to be in it, Rob. That's why, <laughs> that's <laughs> pretty much with this band. And I don't, I, I'm not trying to make this sound cliche at all. I'm just, no. pretty much, and you guys can vouch for this, everything that's happened in this band, it kind of happens like that. It's not like a, it's, it's not really planned. Not, and yeah. when it happens, it's really, really, and I know a lot of people's organic and mm-hmm. natural. I can't even, for example, we met this guy, uh, the fella that got us here. Like we didn't plan to meet him, but we met him at Crawfest, New Orleans. Like how yeah, could that fully. be planned that we're here? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It, sure. It's touch wood, mm. touch wood, but it's the snowball effect with us. And uh, we're very lucky mm. and grateful to have that, um, that, Happen to us sure. a lot of the time. Like greater you know forces I mean? are at work, kind of like making sure yeah. you guys get off. I don't want to get too voodoo with it. No, no, let's, no, let's no, keep no. going. Let's go for no, that. You I'm can put like a though. plant pot in the oval, but mm. eventually the wind's going to blow it over. If you put like a seed in the ground, let it grow, it's going to be organic and real and tough and it's going to yeah. last a lot longer. So now we're talking <laughs> Your group about is full of depth. We're talking <laughs> about building it. foundations here, you know? Mm. Building oh, we're talking about gardening, my brother. What was Rob's thing last tour? 
it's not the plant you put the soil in. What is it? Guys, but 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 like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It's it's literally, and I know you guys can vouch. It hasn't been a thing that we've really been like. Let's do this. Yeah. I mean, we always have goals, but at every we're very lucky because things happen and it's gonna happen. We're, yeah, and we, we go, ride the wave. Yeah, well, we ride the wave. You kind of go with the flow a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel like ride the positive vibes. Yeah, yeah. make like the most that. of every opportunity. Exactly. Talking about positive vibes, you guys clearly have a lot of positive vibes when you're performing. I'm curious what your recording sessions are like. Recording Ooh. sessions. They're great. They're good. Yeah, they're yeah. really good. Describe them to me. Um, we walk oh. inside, and we. Uh, these guys will pick up an instrument and mm -hmm. just start jamming something and then just we'll just start humming melodies and then whatever we're like yeah that's the one then we literally just start writing lyrics okay as like a so your music group. first then lyrics yeah music yeah. first that's like a common common uh, process to be honest the whole music thing takes us about an hour you know and then we get <laughs> like putting a song together like yeah like music yeah, drums bass quick, guitar yeah. And then, to be honest, it's about nine hours of him mm. in the booth. Uh -huh. Can you do that again? You <laughs> sounded like a dolphin. One more time. <laughs> nah, I bit too much goat on that. Let's go one more time. So you're a perfectionist? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm just literally, because now we're working with different producers. Mm. I feel like the, the, the producers goat, you know, just try to try, try to make you do difference. And I'm down. Like, I'm totally down. Look, this opportunity is sick for us. and like For the greater good. For the greater Again, like we were saying, for the greater good. So I'll just go with it. But sometimes they want me to do something a bit different. Sometimes I'm, I try it this way. I like this way. But they're like, no, try and that takes nine hours. Is it hours. difficult working with outside producers since you guys are such a close-knit group? It was. When it we started. It gets tough, man. Yeah. Yeah. I think because the first four songs we did were pretty much in the bedroom and it was just us five and it was like no one else having a say. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when we first went to LA, it was it was challenging, you know, for like good reasons and bad, but it was good because it was it added another brain in there and we learned a lot as well mm -hmm. it was good to be able to, to share that experience with someone else and learn stuff and then and also learn what we do want to do what we don't want to do it's definitely matured us the, a little bit and like i'll just jump in on that the only reason why it was ever difficult like like we never had a fight with a producer mm -hmm. like we, we're always open to opportunities so at the end of the day we'll do what happens but it's back to what we're saying about a baby because we're really protective you know sure. what i mean because mm -hmm. I don't know. It's special. You, you put us. your heart and soul into exactly. this. Yeah, that's and have like, like an outside force kind of weigh in on it. I'm sure mm. you guys are naturally guarded about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ex yeah. That, that's exactly. It's like a natural field that you put up. Yeah. You're just like, oh, why do you want to change that? But then when you take a step back mm. and ten deep breaths and you take a chill pill, it it does sometimes sound better. And that's what we've learned, I think. You know, well, I'm sure you guys sometimes are like too almost like too close to the work, so it's kind of difficult to be objective yeah. about mm. it. So yeah, having an outside back. voice can really help. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. Like, make it into something better than it already is. Yeah. And I guess that's the whole point of having a producer in the room, you know? Sure. Someone that can think about the song from a different perspective outside of me playing guitar or, you know, Jesse drumming or something like that. How many think it took you guys to actually trust the exact producer on your stuff? Well, we worked well, with about 20 different producers. Oh, wow. On, on a bunch of different tracks. Was so... HR first? Yeah, like it, wow. it varied, it wow. definitely varied. Wow. So we yeah. had like some producers that like every producer is different and like some producers we, you click with some producers you don't click with i think because everyone's got a different style we have a style and we will mold with people as much as we can but there's a to a point where mm -hmm. we're like look that's not us at all so um some producers r like really are strong about their way and sometimes their way is not our way at all so it's gotcha. like that's when we clash but then there's sometimes where there's producers that are good because they're like, all right, we want to take your style, but let's put my style with it. And then it's like a natural thing where you, a song will be done in an hour. Do well, you know what I mean? speaking to what I was saying before, kind of like having that outside voice, when you're looking for a producer, are you trying to find someone who's going to be critical of your work because that way you're kind of, you're going to get the best product essentially? Like are you looking for someone, not, not really. necessarily critical essentially, but someone who's going to weigh in who's not necessarily going to have your same exact vision but can yeah, offer yeah, a different yeah. texture to it because they have their own ideas and own musical background yeah but it's yeah. more about just them having the same idea as us okay rather than trying to be like too the different same from vision, the same vision. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but at the same time with all of this we're still a really early band in in and like we all know that so it's we don't really have the luxury of being like no and yet like we do of course like mm -hmm. Um, but like I said, back to what Robbie was saying, we pretty much say yes to everything and just make the most of the opportunity because we are a young band and we want to learn. At the end of the day, we sure. want to learn because... And I know. feel like there are some producers you click with immediately. 
Yeah, uh, of course. Yeah. yeah, and so when you're with producers who you don't click with immediately, is it difficult for you guys to kind of ride out that wave to get to the point where maybe you will click before it eventually cut ties or like, feel like do you know do you know yeah. right away, you know right away like yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fuck with you. <laughs> I don't know what I see you smirking over there. <laughs> I don't think we've no. ever we've ever I think I don't think we've ever had to cut ties. I think no, we've no, gone, no, gone no, with no. it and we've gone it's we've, really we've like taken that, it to yeah. the mm-hmm. end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've never had any drama. I feel like yeah, it's all it's just the song. If the song's good, like. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, it's all that matters at the end of the day. Because at the end of the day, like we said, it's the baby, and sure. we want yeah. to. It all comes back to that. Yeah, whatever, whatever the song needs, you know. Okay, mm. that's pretty much the, what we think. We just want that. the songs to be like good. Like if we did a song with each other and I didn't like it, and so we didn't do the song, like. Do you know what I mean? It's the same thing with the producer. Like, mm. yeah. Well, I'd like to ask something about that. So when you're making a song, you said that you, you know, you're just jamming out, humming along. Is someone taking the creative lead on like lyrics or something like that, or the music behind the song, or is it kind of this complete collaborative effort? It's I think it changes every time. Yeah, like it's some, every time. It's like circumstantial. Do you mean yeah, with sometimes us? We'll yeah, 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 like yeah, just yeah. the band. Yeah, no, no, yeah, we're just, just with you guys. Yeah. So like yeah. when you're going to lay down a track, you know, you're in the studio, just jamming yeah. out, whatever. Is Jerome like, definitely likes to look after the lyrics because. He's really good at it. Yeah, and he's like pretty much, gets pretty much personal with it. So. Yeah, but it, it does change. So sometimes we'll rock up, and as you'll be like, "Hey, just jamming on something in the corner, doing something," and then Robbie will start adding on, and it's just all of a sudden you have a song. But majority of the time, when he's jamming that, in about two hours, we've jammed five different tracks because we're mm. in this jam mode. But then there will be a the song. Zone. Yeah, you'll yeah. get this song with this like sort of. I don't know, this loop of a song after the, having this massive jam where you all look at each other like, fuck, this is... <laughs> and you know, this is special. We've been doing it for like 45 minutes yeah. and, and never yeah. after every, every like five minutes he's just screaming. So you're yeah. like, yeah. okay, if he's screaming then it must be good. So let's remember yeah. this. Yeah. But then one of the boys will get their iPhone and put it in the yeah. record and then we're like, okay, let's go back to that. Yeah, yeah. Um, because a lot of rappers that deal with, they'll just lay down tracks by freestyling. You know, I feel like that's the best way that oh, they, yeah. they can create a track. I feel like yeah. it's a similar vibe to that, just jamming out. Just freestyling. And for us, because we all play every instrument as well yeah so you guys all so, switching that's crazy yeah and and i think it makes it fun because it's because you've got all these different flavors so like True. jesse's a drummer but he's also a brilliant guitarist as well so our thing is like there's no egos it's not about you play that you play that hey i play i'm playing guitar so don't write my part it's mm-hmm. not really like that it's more like let's just make cool music so you guys really put your egos aside yeah and and really, you know, have it's to music it's whoever you know it's just it's let's the, make it's cool the music. like the when, baby. Yeah. Yeah. when we like baby. when we record like we're always like so usually robbie's the guy with the headphones helping us do our own recordings mm-hmm. and like it's really cool to be able to like be like hey robbie what do you think and like no one gets upset he would be like nah like try this and it's really open. I like and that. Really, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it sounds like you guys have great energy, great vibes. Um, family, speaking man. about your, you know, your sound, you guys are like a really interesting collection of like hip hop, like rock, pop, funk, like everything kind of melded together. It's awesome. Um, I'm curious, what, what did you? What type of music did you guys listen to growing up? Pretty much that, dude. What you just yeah. said. Really? Yeah. All, all together. Actually, that yeah, man, yeah. like, it was yeah. We have all listened to a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. As many influences possible, kind of. It's because yeah. yeah. everyone's yeah. had their own. Kind different of upbringing, yeah, yeah, yeah different and, di- and yeah. the age gap and what we used to listen to compared to like Jesse and then yeah, the knees. Sorry, what, wait, guys. what year did you guys form the band again? Five years ago. Five years ago. Okay. Um, have you guys ever heard of Kids these days? No. You know Vic Mensa, the rapper. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that was Vic Mensa's old band. He was in it from like 2009 to 2013. You guys should look him up because you sound a lot. Not I want to say a lot like them. But you guys have similar vibes, and I definitely picked up on that when I first started listening to you. So. I really enjoy that because I think it's an awesome band. Um, right. Do you guys have any groups you guys compare yourselves to? I know it's a kind of like not a great thing to say. People like that compare we compare ourselves. I don't know if we compare ourselves. We, we, like we sa- look up to and, yeah, right. yeah. and would love to play meet with, them and yeah. play with them. Mm-hmm. Peppers. What do we love? Chili okay. Peppers. Jermaine Any Klein. idea. Jermaine Klein. Any idea is great. Bruno. I love Bruno. Bruno yeah. Band. Jamiroquai's band. Break, break, uh, break bot, break producer. Bot. And there then all the greats, man. Michael Jackson, yeah. Stevie Wonder. Oh, I mean, Michael Jackson's the king. Yeah. Thriller is the best song of all time. We got time. Stevie left. Yeah. yeah. Stevie gonna, we can still do, do it. it. Yeah. Can do it. Just anything with the soul, you know? I feel that. It kind of reflects your whole group mentality. Mm-hmm. Got the soul. So. Anything? Uh, <laughs> yeah. we, we pretty much got no soul with this shit. Like, but... <laughs> right. um, We're so tired. I want to talk oh, about it's a real quick couple of your songs. You have a uh, one song can't afford it all, and it's a really great track. Kygo remixed it. 
I'm kind of curious. So obviously it's a huge honor to have Kygo remix one of your songs, but is it kind of like a double-edged sword in a certain regard? Because yeah, Kygo is remixing your song, but are you afraid that it's then going to be associated with Kygo as opposed to yourselves? No. No. I love electronic music. Yeah, I've never thought that. I love it. That was a full bootleg remix as well. Like we didn't even know yeah, who we he was. Oh yeah. really? Well, yeah. when he first we remixed it, he was no, like he wasn't. He was Kygo, but he wasn't like, Kygo. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I when that. he first did it, he came up to us. Was like, yeah, like he, he was like, yeah, we want to do this release, and we're like, yeah, well, yeah, cool, no, I did, just did it. Just went with it. And then literally, I, I don't know, like three eight months, months, eight months later, mm, this boom. boom. Yeah, Just so photos it of blew private up. jets and Covered stuff. Five and a half million plays on SoundCloud. Good on him. Yeah. Oh, like, that gets me yeah. so pumped. Mm. Yeah, that gets yeah. me really so pumped. pumped. I think it's yeah. helped us as well, like, especially in Europe and we stuff. We got excited because like, he hit the million yeah. plays with our song. It's over yeah. five million on SoundCloud. Yeah. It is now, but at the yeah. time yeah. we were like, whoa, that's so cool. He, he mm. man, he, he's a great artist. Like, oh, he's at genius. the start, he when we heard him, we were just like, oh, producer. Tropical House was huge. He's a genuine talent. Man, he's talented. He's seriously talented. For sure. Production level, like, seriously. Oh, top notch. Oh, mate. Phenomenal stuff. So, skipping ahead a little bit. You guys have a big day tomorrow. Your EP is dropping. Mm. 61 Barclay. Yeah. What's the time? It's like hours away now. A couple of hours. I want to buy it's so it. It's out at 12. Is this your first collective EP? Or like official? This is our first like, official, isn't it? Because the other EP. one was I, I, I was scouring every single musical source. I couldn't find another album. So. Yeah, it's yeah. different here. Because we did... Um, oh, okay. We've got another EP, but it was more of a collection of Singles. Singles. Okay. I mean, we put so it wasn't like a cohesive project? Yeah, and then we did the four and then sort of decided to put them together so we could put something out. You okay. Know? This is the first thing we've done where it's like 61 Barkley. Gotcha. That's so how are you feeling for it? Oh man. Oh, excited. Yeah. yeah. Pumped? Nervous. I'm nervous. really nervous actually. Anxious. Mm, very anxious. I saw the CD today for the I'm first time. I'm ready man. How'd that feel? <laughs> that was ridiculous. That must be so trippy. Have you been working on this for, how long have you guys worked on it for? Uh, six months. I don't know. Yeah. Six months. So don't to know. see like manifest in a physical CD must be a wild feeling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I played, it, it today. played it for the Uber driver. He yeah. gave me his card, which is a good sign. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what can you tell us about it? What can we expect? Ooh. What do we Bank da, account. Da, Let's talk about it. <laughs> 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 well, you have a couple singles off it, right? Uh, one, one single. One, one single? Yeah. Which one was that? That was nobody better. And you shot a video for that too, right? Yeah. yeah. What was that? As his brother directed it. Oh, no yeah. way. So, yeah. as we were saying earlier, keeping it in the family. Clearly. We like to, so far, our first two uh, film clips have been with all our close friends, and my brothers filmed both of them. That's great. And on this one, they've started, it's my two brothers and my dad started a company called Harpy Creative, so they're... Just keep working. it in the family. Yeah. yeah and what amazing. was cool is there's, uh, there, so there's like, the guy that was holding the candy cane in Cash Potato, mm -hmm. he's the door guy in the new one. <laughs> and okay. then, so we got like a similar character. Yeah, we them around. And the guy that's like, ladies and gentlemen, blah, blah, at the start. <laughs> Jacoby, he's um, the bar guy. Yeah. Because he starts like, if you look, there's like similar characters in there. Mm -hmm. And a little fun fact, the little girl at the start of Cash Potato mm -hmm. is me and Jerome's little sister. Oh, no way. Yeah. Keep in the family. Yeah. 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 Always. La Familia. Seriously. Um, <laughs> That's not a name. <laughs> um, so how many songs are we going to be on the EP? Four. Four? Four? All right. Succinct. I like it. Good stuff. Mm. Um, well, I know you guys are super tired. He's put on a dope show for us tonight. You guys got a big tour ahead of you. Good luck to it. Thank you for speaking with me. I appreciate it. And best of luck, guys. Thanks, man. Thank, Thank you. you. That was fun.